song on an album called Secrets about justice and where where justice falls short sometimes. In the case of the song that we did was a song about a brother named Gary Tyler. And Gary Tyler was at 17 years old, convicted of a murder he may well have not committed. Down in a place called Angola, Louisiana, he is doing time. And he has been there for some years now, waiting for justice to run its course. But it reminded me of a story about an old man that used to live in my neighborhood when I was growing up on the lower west side of Manhattan. There used to be an old man in the park every day, spring, summer, and fall. We weren't very creative back in those times. We just called him the old man. And in the wintertime, he would disappear, and we would wonder how he was. But of course, we weren't supposed to act like we cared about anybody. But when the grass would turn green and the old man would be back on the scene, we would always say, well, how you doing, Pops? How you been? And he would say, oh, I'm doing fine, Junior. Shit, I could have been in jail somewhere. He said, you know, smoking marijuana is illegal in America. And if I had to do a day for every joint I rolled, shit, they'd have to make me do forever. So I'm doing fine, I could have been pulling time, became sort of a slogan around the way when you were out to enjoy the sunshine and the good weather or the bad weather, you felt as though you were doing better than some people who had been incarcerated. So we did a song about Brother Gary Tyler, but it was actually about everybody everywhere who has ever been mistreated and been placed behind bars when they should be out in the sunshine. Well, I've been painted a picture Pictures of deals in back alleys where politicians often hide. But it's much more important to me than in Gola, Louisiana. Got a lot to do with just a Revely, revely, revely. Get up, get dressed. Let's get on the ball. This is Ayatollah Mar back at you. Bob's in California, live and direct. Uh, I thought I'd have to put this up. I just left uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. And when I was in Las Vegas, there, a lot of people was talking about this Keefe D. How Keefe D got rolled up, how the things happen. I'm hearing podcasts talking about how Keefe D got uh, beat down and they're all in the media. And it's such a tragedy how we uh, put ourselves in situations where we, uh, I don't care what happened with Keefe D, not actually, but, and he put himself in the position he's in by running his mouth. I told him a long time ago, you better get with them handlers, man, you know, do a, do a snowfall, get that shit up off of you. But uh, in the position he in, uh, he, he didn't kill Tupac, you know, and we, we take up arms against our own. And all of them dudes in Vegas, you know, they talking that shit. 
uh, and these podcasters, how KP got beat down, they got with him. Well, why didn't they protect him? Let me show you this guy. Um, he was convicted of killing a seven-year-old black girl at the prima donna, at the prim, went into uh, the bathroom when her father, Mr. Iverson, sent his seven-year-old daughter to the women's restroom. This cracker went in there from Long Beach and was going after his graduation, going to Las Vegas in a limousine, him and his friend. And he went into the bathroom, raped, killed, and molested this seven-year-old girl, black girl, black girl. Let me in. Jeremy uh, Stomeyer. Jeremy Stomeyer was convicted in Las Vegas for killing a seven-year-old black. Now, look at this pack of wood smiling. He's in prison in Nevada, and a Nan Coon put their hands on him. But you want to do so? They protected him for killing a black baby, a seven-year-old, out of Long Beach, California. How do we so easily want to always ramp and run over our, our own, but you'll let these crackers just go, and it's okay. Nothing happens to them. Ain't none of you lifers. Now Stuttermeyer is not, he's in the... The, the low penitentiary in um, Las Vegas. He's in a minimum security for doing life for killing a little black girl and you want to jump on Keefy e. D. Oh, he, everybody loved Tupac. So, Sharice, Sharice Iverson, is not worthy of love that a white man killed her at seven years old and he's allowed to live his life out in the penitentiary. Back in the day, back when prison was really prison, if a pecker would come in and then kill the black, he gonna get dealt with it. It was a white boy that uh, kidnapped Sidney Burson. Sidney Burson was one of the singers with the Supremes. Diana Ross and the Supremes. She sang with the Supremes. And this white boy kidnapped her. And he came to San Quentin. Matt Dillon whooped him up. Made him a girl. And walked around with him for the rest of his life. He had to be a miss. You know, mistreat black women or black kids when it was a prison. When I was in prison, these people talking, I was in prison when it was a real prison. If a white boy came in with swastikas on his neck, lightning bolts, blacks wanted to know how many niggas you killed. Who did you kill? You had to get that off or get with it. Immediately, you had to go to the Aryan Brotherhood or you had to go somewhere because you was going to get it. If you didn't get one of us first, we was going to get you. Now we savage each other. We go for the jiggle on each other and let these other folks just walk around and do what the hell they want to do. And they done done all this shit to us. It stutter my Reuben, Jeremy. Hey man, uh, first degree murder. Great. Molesting a child less than 16 years old. These are the things. We have bigger problems in each us than, than each other. We have more problems in this world than worried about what another Pyru do, what a blood do, what a crib do. We need to bind all these fists up and fight for our lives because it's slowly slipping away. I come here yesterday, El Segundo and San Pedro locked up. They didn't kill one, shot three. So I'm just saying, I just wanted to shoot this out there and let you know that, man, we got bigger problems. Stuttermeyer, Stuttermeyer, get with this man. Do something in your life. Like and subscribe. 
and shoot back at me every day. I'm here, the Ayatollah. I'm signing off.